Hello, welcome to Severin Church.
Thank you, Pastor Art. I love the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Because if you just listen to the words, God is faithful yesterday, today, and forever. And that should give you comfort and peace today. If you're lacking peace today, take stock in the fact that your God is faithful. And He will never let you down. Last Sunday I preached on prayer. And I asked you, if you wanted to do this, to pick something very specific and pray for 40 days and see what God will do with that. Anybody in here take that challenge and have something you're praying on for 40 days? Is there anyone who has done that besides me? Okay, there's a few. Good. I would recommend that today you can start another 40 days. Think about something that God can help you with that has been dragging you down. 
and turn it to the Lord. Write it down. It's important to write it down. Put it in your Bible. Put it somewhere close so you can check and see what God does for you. Today, my sermon is entitled, Life's Two Roads. I'm going to be preaching from Psalms for a couple of Sundays to come because the book of Psalms is just beautiful. And what you may not know is there's a story behind each of the Psalms. The reason that David wrote 73 Psalms and Ashfish, who was a scribe or a Levite in the temple, wrote a whole bunch of songs. And then Moses wrote one or two, and there were some in there sprinkled. We don't know who wrote. Psalm 1, we have no idea who wrote that psalm, but whoever it was was trusting in God. And they definitely knew the difference between the godly and the ungodly and how to live a blessed life. What I want you to think about for a moment is you're walking on a path through the woods. Are you all there with me this morning? We're walking on a path through the woods. To the left of us is a tree, but it's an old tree. The limbs are dying on it. There's fruit you can smell, but you can't see the fruit. And the tree is unsightly. And you can tell that it's dying. And you turn on the path and you look to the right and there is another tree whose leaves and limbs are spread out towards heaven. The leaves are perfect in their shape. You can smell the sweetness of the fruit of that tree. And it entices you. Which one of those is more appealing to you? Obviously, it's the one on the right. Well, let me tell you, each of us has a tree growing inside of us. Now, not really, but, you know, follow along with me. Are we the type of person that when people see us, they see Christ, they see the fruit, they see the sweetness of the love that we have for others, And they're attracted to that tree. Or do they see this tree that is wicked, that is not bearing fruit, and is dying? Each of us have one of those trees in our lives. See, you can't have both. Jesus said, you cannot serve two masters. For you will hate one, and you will love the other. And in Revelation, Jesus said, I wish that you were either hot for me, or cold, or cold, where you have nothing to do with me, rather than the lukewarm. The lukewarm Christians are the ones that sort of look like this tree, And they sort of look like that tree, but they're really neither one. The Lord said, it makes me sick. So wouldn't you rather be the tree that's limbs are spread out towards heaven, acknowledging the fact that God is our creator and that he watches over us? Let me tell you a little bit about the book of Psalms. Each one of these is a song. It's a song that they wrote, the Jews wrote, to sing each day. And I will tell you that when Jesus was on the cross, one of the phrases that he used was, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You remember that? Turn to Psalm 22, 1, please. I have a little Bible lesson this morning. Psalm 22, 1. You there with me? What does the first verse say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Legend has it that when our Lord was on the cross, He was actually singing this psalm. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The priests of the temple would assign a song for you to sing for a period of time. Psalm 1 was the first song in the hymn book. And they put it to music. And as the people sang it, it reminded them of the two paths that they have in life. The path to be godly or the path to be ungodly. The Lord is very clear in Psalm 1 that He blesses those who are on the right path. Jesus even said that the path that leads to the kingdom of heaven is a very narrow path. Didn't he, Pastor Art? Very narrow. But wide is the path that leads to destruction. You know what he was saying? There aren't many believers in the last days. There aren't many true believers, but golly day, there's an expressway going into wickedness. We can see that today, can't we? Amen. Turn on the news. Listen to our politicians on both sides. They don't make what side. Don't make no difference. They're going to lie to you anyway. Can you edit that before the next? No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> well, they do. Psalm chapter 5 is broken down into five sections. There are certain psalms in this section, this one, this one, and this one. Let me tell you what they are. The first section, it talks that we as humans are blessed, and then we are fallen, and then we are redeemed. I want you to notice that in each one of these uh, sections, God always comes in and rescues those who trust in Him. So the first section, we are fallen, excuse me, we're blessed, and we fall, and God redeems us. The second one says that the Jewish nation is ruined, recovered, and rescued by God. The third section just praises God as holy. I can't wait to get into some of those psalms. The fourth section tells us that we are part of the kingdom of God. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're already part of the kingdom of God. Isn't that good to know? We're not of this world. You're here for a while. We're going to spend a few years here. But golly day, what we got coming is the kingdom of God. Be there forever. And the last one are just songs of praise. I think it'll be an interesting series that you will enjoy. Next week I'm going to be talking about David and his son. And the title is, So You Think You Got Problems With Your Kids. You ain't seen nothing. All right, I want to read Psalm 1 again and just look at it. And then we'll break it down in a few, a few points. And then we'll get into the Lord's Supper because it really ties into the Lord's Supper. Because when you take the Lord's Supper this morning, you are saying that you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you want to follow Him. If you take it and you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, then you shouldn't take it because you're making a commitment this morning, okay? You all make a commitment today. Blessed, and another word for blessed is happy. Happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the, of the scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night, and he is like a tree planted in the water, which yields his fruit in its season, and his leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Not so are the wicked, for they are like chaff, that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Very easy question for you today. Which road are you on? 
And guess what? Only you know. You may have us all fooled, but you are on one of the two roads. There's only two ways to live. And what kind of roots do you have? Do you have shallow roots or do you have good and strong roots? I remember it back, probably the biggest thing that happened to us in a long time was in 2003 when Hurricane Isabel hit us direct on. And if you remember, there were trees laying everywhere, wasn't there? How many of you were trapped in your house and couldn't get out because of trees across the road and across the driveway? Anybody? Okay. I had a pecan tree that used to give me those big paper shell pecans. You know the ones you don't have to, you just pop them and they pop open. You know the, y'all know what I'm talking about, the paper shell? Man, I love that tree. It had seen hurricane after hurricane and northeaster after northeaster, wind blow after wind blow, but I watched in 2003 as Isabel took it and blew it back and forth. Back and forth. And then you start seeing the ground begin to move a little bit. And next thing I knew, it toppled over. My poor pecan tree was dead. <laughs> Ain't had a pecan since. <laughs> or excuse me, pecan. I don't know how they pronounce it in the courthouse. Down, down in Guinea, where they're pecans. <clears throat> or I said, come on, get to your point. That's what he's telling me. Get to the point, yes. <clears throat> but... If you were there, you witnessed trees snapping off and falling over, and you could just watch them. But you know why? Because their root system was shallow. They weren't able to withstand the storm. Let me just be as clear as I can this morning. Is that one day there's going to be a storm in your life that's going to blow you back and forth. Any of y'all ever experienced one of those before? The key is, how deep is your roots in the Lord? Because let me tell you, if you're shallow, if you have shallow roots, you're going to blow over. That's what the psalm says. The wicked are not bearing fruit. The wicked are not prospering. And when he uses the word prosper, it's not the prosper like we know, the prosper that you have money in the bank and you drive a BMW. That's not the prosper he's talking about. He's talking about living a blessed life where you have peace and joy in your life. And you have someone to go to when you have problems. That's the blessing that we have because we live for the Lord. I want a deep root system, don't you? And it says, this tree is planted by the rivers of water. Have you ever seen a tree that's, that's close to a ditch that has some root systems going down in there? It's drinking all year long, isn't it? When it's dry and the grass is drying up and brown, you'll look at that tree and it's just as green as it can be because it knows where to put its roots. When everything else around you is dying and falling away, if you have your roots in the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the truths of the scripture, you will continue to stand strong. And it says your leaf will not wither. And whatever happens to you in your life will prosper. That's why the psalmist said happy is the man who walks with the Lord. And then it says, living delight in God's Word. Quietly repeating God's Word to yourself in times of trouble. Let me tell you, what this, let me summarize what this is saying. Is do not be, choose, let me say, choose your friends wisely of who you associate with. Because he said, blessed are you if you're not in 
the ungodly. You're not with the ungodly and you're not listening to them. Choose your close friends wisely. And then enjoy the Word of God because it will bring you joy and happiness. Get into the Word of God. The giant redwoods. How many of you have ever seen the giant redwoods before? Some of them are almost 400 feet tall. Almost 30 feet around. They have a massive root system. And I'm thinking when the Lord gave this psalm to whoever wrote it, that he was probably thinking about the giant redwoods. And thinking about those trees and said, Blessed are you if you follow me and walk in the path with me, for you're going to be like that tree. And it will never perish. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. It's a simple choice. And we're going to have an invitation time after communion, after the Lord's Supper. And I'll just ask you to think about your, your own life. Which path are you on? You're either walking with the Lord or you're not. And if you're not, let's get that right today. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn this part over to Pastor Art. We're going to get the elements ready, and then, uh, then we'll do communion in a few minutes. With you, responses, and also with you. The Lord be with you. God is with us today. He's in this holy place at this special time. We as people come to celebrate this holy meal. We always lift our hearts up to God because God gives us everything. He gives us the right path, as Pastor Bill said. To choose the right anchor in our roots and our faith. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, God, and we join their unending hymn by singing.
Savior, Jesus Christ. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Severin Church now offers the availability of giving online. Go to our website, severinchurch.faith, and click on the Give Online tab. From there, you'll be taken to a secure site to create a unique login and password. Thank you for your generosity.